to another Sims 4 speed build. Today we're doing a little bit of like a Cape Cod speed build, kind of a uh, little bit craftsman style, a little bit Cape Coddy. Um, I saw this, a bunch of houses like this on Google recently, like it's been one of those things that's just kind of kept popping up randomly. I forget what that effect is called, but where you think about something and then it shows up in your life a bunch. And I've been really wanting to build one, but I was kind of nervous about it because it's one of those styles that requires living in the roof line. And that's not really easy in The Sims. And I'm not the most happy with the layout on the top floor to make it work, but I think we got there in the end. It took a while though, and I don't like the bathroom upstairs, but I think it was potentially the best user space that I could come up with at the time. This would be a really fun house to come back to in a couple months in Reno. But I really like the style and aesthetic of this house. I tried to go very sort of traditional on the coast. I was thinking like East Coast of America, thinking like Maine, Rhode Island maybe. Something like that. Obviously very heavily inspired by Rindleson Bay because I believe that's kind of where they were going with the style in this world. It rains a lot. It's very sort of northeastern. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, so I grew up with sort of similar style houses, but with a distinct twist that I'm not even sure I could easily describe to you. But when you're in the Pacific Northwest, you 110% recognize that you're in the Pacific Northwest. There's a, there's a style and a vibe. It's very woodsy. Um, but I wasn't particularly going for that. You'll see those influences in this house though, because obviously we are um, made up of where we live, right? So I had a lot of fun with this one. I really like the front of this house. I was really, I, the front of the house was really important to me to get right. I had an idea in my head. I really, I made custom shutters. I'm not like the world's happiest with the custom shutters, but it's an idea that I think could be explored more and ignore what's happening with like the dormers right now. It gets better, I promise. It took me a long time to get there and I thought about cutting it out. I was gonna cut most of the dormer situation out, but as someone who struggles with making dormers and struggles with certain build techniques like that, I decided to leave it in because for me, if I was watching somebody do this, it would help me more to see the process. So I decided to leave it in so perhaps it'll help someone else maybe see the process. Um, so, you know, feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to watch me fuss with dormers for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> but, um, I did the front of the house. I really cared about getting correct. I really wanted it to look like be very recognizable as like a little Cape Cod. Honestly, it was also kind of mirroring those center chimney houses that are like really prevalent in like Massachusetts. Um, they're called center chimney houses because the chimney comes right out of the center of the house, which I didn't exactly do. I stuck the chimney in the back and on the side. But the idea behind it was like the hearth was in the middle of the home. It warmed the whole home. It kept the whole house fed, things like that. And sometimes you have double chimney houses. I watched a, a documentary on it and now I think I'm an expert. I'm not. But <laughs> um, so I was thinking about those kind of houses too as well. So you'll see a little bit of that kind of influence, especially in the kitchen. There was a wing that I didn't really know what to do with. And so I kind of decided what I would have done with it in real life most likely because I'm not really a formal dining room kind of person is I would have made it like more kitchen stores or made it more usable for the kitchen so it's honestly kind of just a silly little showpiece in the house because the sims don't need storage you know they don't need like tons of counter space necessarily when they cook they're not programmed to sprawl like a normal human um but it kind of gives the impression of like, oh, this would be where like all her baking and stuff happens. Um, and then there's a sunroom off the living room, kind of the same thing, although it is usable as like a reading nook or something like that. But the Sims don't really need sprawling sp space, but I gave them sprawling space in this house. The upstairs is kind of tight. It's technically two bedrooms. Uh, I have one set up as an office right now because the sim that lives on this lot was actually the first sim to ever be on this channel. I booted her out of her house and I came back to build this and so I was still kind of building it with her in mind a little bit. You know, maybe this is a house number two, a little bit of an upgrade. Um, but also I just didn't really have a sim in mind and so when I kicked her out of her house I was like, well, I, uh, I'll, build, I'll build it kind of for her. So she has an office and, a, and a, the bedroom is um, on the side with the balcony and the, is a usable balcony because she had one in the last house. Um, and those, those do seem to be kind of common, although I don't know how usable they are, to be honest with you, in actual houses, but they all have that little like flat roof with the cute little like fencing decoration. So I decided to do that. The house actually inspired another house that is in progress that I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day because it was more or less just a proof of concept. Um, but this inspired another house recently that has a similar little, I don't even know what to call it because balcony feels weird, but I guess it is a balcony, but I, it, does, it feels wrong to call it a balcony. 
But either way, I spent a lot of time on the outside front of this house and I spent a decent amount on the backside, although I will say because it faces the ocean and I know if I lived on this lot, I'd be outside all the time. The backyard is much more utilitarian. There's some gardening, there's places to eat, um, a place to work in, you know, be outside. And uh, it leads obviously right down to the beach. So I put a bathroom in the back of the house as well so that when you came in the back door, you could immediately just head into that half bath and get changed a little bit and cleaned up so that you didn't track sand all the way through the house. In a perfect world, if the dimensions of this house had worked out just a little bit bigger, if I had thought ahead a little bit, I probably would have put a mudroom in this house for real life because tracking mud through the house, tracking sand through the house is never fun. Um, I had a friend who lived right on the beach growing up uh, and we were very blessed. We always we were out playing pirates, out playing, you know, in the woods, playing Bridge to Arbithia, all these different things before we read the book, admittedly. The, the book kind of killed it for us. But anyways, I digress. Like, we were always outside, is the point I was making, because she lived on the beach, we were always covered in sand, and her mom, God bless her, was like, if you come any farther than the outdoor shower in my house, I don't care what time of year, I'm going to have to call your mom. So we got very used to using the mudroom, we got very used to using the outdoor shower. I have picked up my tea one moment. We, uh, we, we spent a lot of time in the mudroom, because we didn't want to track things in the house. They had a huge mudroom, though, because they were big, like, outdoor people with, like, boats and, and jet skis and stuff. Like, they were always outside, so they were pretty used to it, but she did not want sand in her house, and I, I as an adult, I totally get that, because I live on a farm, so I don't track sand in, I track mud in, and, like, horse manure, and there's, there's definitely, like, unless I absolutely have to for some reason, like, my boots don't come in my bedroom, you know, the boots don't really come past the back door unless I absolutely have to for some reason, um, and I have, like, a pair of slippers that I wear around in the house because I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to track a bunch of stuff in, and we have these things called goat heads, they're, like, it's, it's a it's a ground covering weed, but when it dries, it dries these little pokey balls. And that sounds not that bad, but I mean, they're like nasty little, st like Google goat's head. Uh, and and, and the, they're nasty little stickers. Um, we have those here where I live. And uh, you can't beat them. Like, when the world ends, it'll be cockroaches and goat's head. I swear to you, they are the devil's uh, plant because you can't beat them. You can burn them. You can burn them and chase them down for 20 miles, and if you miss a single strand, they're back. And if your neighbor has goat head, you have goat head. It's ridiculous. Um, but that's another reason why my stuff doesn't go to my house, because they hurt, man. And they stick in your foot and they don't come back out. They're painful, so. That was a weird digression from I didn't want sand in this hypothetical Sims house. I struggled with the layout for quite a while. I still, I still struggle with the layout. Um... And like I said, I think this house would be really good for a reno because now that I've stared at it a while, I think there's maybe some options that could be a little bit better. Although I don't actually hate the downstairs once it came together. It took me a little while. The entry feels a little bit like a waste of space, but I don't really know what you would do with that space otherwise. So I guess it works out okay. The house is a little bit cut up, but it's supposed to be an older house and a lot of older houses were sort of chopped apart. So it makes sense. There's a little use of platforms in this house um, in the sunroom, but I didn't go crazy with it. Platforms I have a hard time with because they they don't want to stay when you bring, put them in the gallery. It seems like no matter what I do when I'm uploading a lot, I get little notes from people being like, hey, this did not actually stay the way you wanted it to. And I don't know what I'm doing incorrectly to make that happen, but they won't stay when I put them in the gallery. So that is unfortunate. The uh, inspiration for this house is very easy to pick out. It's very easy, easy to pick out because it's, it's very much just on the beach, coastal, Cape Cod, a little bit old school. I do fix that bush that was peeking through the wall, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, I tried, there was one sort of room where I didn't really follow the coastal theme. There was a rug that I received recently in a pack. Um, I don't remember what pack it's from. But probably high school years, because that's the most recent one I bought. So I'm thinking it's a high school years rug, but I couldn't tell you for certain. Um, but anyways, I just noticed this um, this rug and it's really pretty and so I built the entire uh, office space around that rug because realistically that's probably what I haven't done if I found, I found a rug that I absolutely fell in love with like that I had to, I had to probably design the whole office around it so that's what we did so the office is kind of purpley it's very it's a lot, lot darker than the rest of the house but honestly that might be good for working like if the rest of your house was really sunny and bright it might be nice to have a space to go cozy up at the end of um, you know the day go get your stuff done might be a nice break. I find that I need like visual cues when I'm done with work to switch into like building mode or something else. Um, the other day I had a 14 hour work day, which is not bad until you consider there was no breaks in that 14 hour work day. Um, and so it took like a lot of 
really being intentional about stepping away um, to get out of work mode because my brain was just like, nope, we're committed. This is what we do now. We're we're in work mode. Um, so like I think about that stuff in The Sims, even though The Sims are incapable of doing about work. I think um, I always think like my Sim, if they work from home, especially they would do about work because I do about work. So I always try to make it so that they have. Um, a good break between their office space or a way to put their office space out of the office or try to at least it doesn't always happen um, but that was kind of the goal was a, a really solid transition between the office and like the bedroom and the office and the rest of the house this house is also pet friendly I planned on giving her a dog and a cat I think is what I planned for in here she doesn't own one currently the sim that lives here it's the first sim on the site um, I cannot remember her name off the top of my head right now it's been a crazy week but she she lives here and so she's gonna get a dog and a cat i think is what i plan or maybe just a cat i cannot remember there's pets stuff in here there's there's room for pets so you'd be good to go i think in this house i planned for that if i didn't i will fix it before i put it up in the gallery i had intended to have a pet friendly home in here um but yeah so this is what i was talking about this is kind of admittedly a little bit of a show place i don't really know what your son would actually do in here except sit in the corner awkwardly like they're in trouble but in theory this would maybe be where like your baking supplies went or like your fine china went or you know is it kind of somewhere between kitchen storage and like a little kitchen workplace or like you pull like a table out and that's where you make your breads or something i don't know i don't know i liked the idea of having it and being all warm and cozy though and i just i like the idea of having a fireplace in each part of the house because if it is an older house and it is being run out you wouldn't get rid of the like intentionally built fireplaces because even if they're not warming the house now they're holding up the house you know you would have them refurbished so at least that's the idea but i can hear my voice really starting to go i have a very limited amount of time to do voiceovers today so i'm gonna go ahead and cut this one short because i have three more to do i really appreciate you guys hanging out i really hope you like this build it should be up in the gallery shortly i've had some internet issues again recently but once i get those worked out there should be another big batch of houses going back up in the gallery and hopefully this video, I won't have to go to the library to upload. Well, that would be nice. Anyways, I'm going to go. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. I hope you're feeling very, very loved right now. And if you aren't, please know that I love you. I'm excited you exist and I'm glad you're here. And I will talk to you all in the next one.